It's September 18th, Monday, 2023, and Litecoin is still running. Nearly 12 years straight, processing transactions, sound money for the digital age, finite supply, MWeb privacy. Anyway, uh, Monday, a little bit foggy here. The fog of war, the haze coming out of DC. Hazy shade of winter. Isn't that what it is? Well, this, it's not quite winter yet. Uh, this Saturday, I think it is, the 23rd, will be the fall equinox. We will no longer have day, more daylight than darkness. It will start to turn more dark than day. Uh, 23rd. There's, there's TikTok videos, there's, you know, it's on Twitter, or I'm sorry, X, all things X, platform formerly known as Twitter, uh, about the 23rd, and there's all these references in these different movies, a compilation has been put together, that looks eerie, it's just the fog, it looks like almost like a rainbow coming down in the fog, you know, the light, really weird. It's just really densely foggy right there in that spot. Huh. Okay, maybe it's the sunlight. I don't know, whatever. It's that reflection off the flat earth, you know, the curvature of something on the dome structure, spinning disc, like a water globe. It's hard to say. I have never been off planet, so it's hard to say what it really looks like. Never been to the South Pole. Ice wall, whatever you want to call it, Antarctica, so I don't know. All I know is what I know. It's not a lot. But uh, yeah, the Equinox coming up. It'll be a perfect time to uh, usher in something new, a change, something that the vampires would like to do, or the good guys, the vampire slayers would like to do, or maybe a battle of both. I guess maybe we'll see what happens. But it is that time, I think. We're ushering into the, um, I don't know what you want to call it, the reckoning, the time when all this has to get resolved, has to be, uh, got to come to grips with it, got to make a decision, you got to trust yourself, you got to know what's happening and open your eyes to it and quit living in darkness, quit living in fear, and just make a choice. Make a choice to do something that you know you're supposed to be doing rather than sitting back and waiting for someone to come save your butt. Because you can save yourself now if you just do it. Exit this vampire casino. That is the key. How do you do that? Do that with different forms of, really it's, uh, man it is hazy over there. Uh, it's the money. It's your energy. Where are you putting it? You putting it in sound money? You putting it in sound things? You locking it up for future use or are you putting it in something that's absolute garbage and it's going to leak out all your energy leaky battery that's the dollar the fiat dollar the federal reserve note not a real dollar based on silver no it's uh it's garbage it's made up it's a fiction it's an illusion it's something that they've used like vampire casino chips to completely rob you of all your energy hey get some of these they'll be fine and then look what's happened that's why you need a 40 percent increase if you're the in the uaw over the next four years that's why ups just almost struck and stopped working because they said hey we need more money and they got more money because it was necessary because this this circus called the u.s government corporation has created, and I like the word Jim uh, said, uh, counterfeited all this money. Because that's what they're doing. They're counterfeiting all this, all these Federal Reserve notes that they call money, which aren't money because they don't hold your value. So they've been counterfeiting this stuff. And so we've been losing purchasing power because we've been taking these counterfeit notes and spending them. Yeah, they work, but they work less and less. They're worth less and less. They're becoming worthless because that's what they are. That's what they're built to do. How much money did we create counterfeit? Not we. How much did these vampires counterfeit during the last pandemic? Trillions. And now we see what happens. You see it all over the place where, well, that money, you know, 
people kind of used the system a little bit and got a lot of money out of it and they weren't supposed to get it. Yeah, because you're all giving it away. Because you're just throwing it out there trying to seed something that would grow in this economy, which you guys killed. So you kill it and then you're like, oh shoot. Let's put a bunch of fertilizer on it. Hopefully something will grow. Then you got this mutant that grows back. You know, some kind of genetically modified monstrosity that, that rears its ugly shape. And now we don't even know what we're dealing with. We don't even know if we have a real economy. We have no idea, you know, what, what, what this landscape is that we're dealing with. But we put a bunch of fertilizer on it and spread it everywhere just to see what would happen. Well, a lot of people took that and they put it and, you know, created these uh, malinvestments. Things that weren't supposed to be invested in because it wasn't the free market. It didn't decide. No, it was government picking winners and losers once again counterfeiting money and saying here take this take this take this and oh you that wouldn't lead to any kind of corruption or anything wrong right so you had oh my goodness these birds big flock of seagulls well, they're really not seagulls just thought it'd be funny flock of seagulls in the midwest go figure but now the counterfeiting's not going to stop it's going to continue. I think this week they're going to choose whether or not to raise rates, the Federal Reserve. What is the Fed going to do? Oh my gosh. Does it really matter? No, the money's already been destroyed. It's all counterfeit bills anyway. It's all poker chips that only work in that casino. And guess what? The tables in that casino got ripped up, felt, the wheels turn and wobble, the roulette wheel squeaky, you know, it stops where it's not supposed to stop. I and mean, you're playing in a rigged casino. And that's it. And you're playing with chips that they put the number on that it really doesn't matter what number is on it because they can change it tomorrow. Hey, this used to be a 10, now it's a 100. Oh, now it's back to a 10. And they just manipulate it because it's all their money. It's all their fake money. You don't have a choice how much it's worth. You might think it's worth something, but it isn't. That's why you gotta strike and make more money. So that's the situation, that's where we're at. The only thing to do is put your money, put your effort, I should say, your energy into things that hold value. Now, what are those things? Could be anything. Look around, everything you do every day, what do you need? What do you use? You eat a lot of beans, get cans of beans. You need water? You might have need a way to find store water or filter your water so that you can have water when you need it because you're going to need it every day. You need to eat or store up some food. It's going to last a while. Something that has some nutritional value. Let's just blow this down. It's not going to rain today, I don't think. Not a cloud in the sky until they start spraying. Blue as can be. And then you'll see a trail. And if you don't know what those are, you haven't been looking up. So you look around at those things that you need. What do you need? Do you need whatever? You need oil to change in, you know, an oil filter to change your vehicle so that you can, you know, have that, you know, and maybe you can't get those oil filters anymore. Maybe that oil gets really expensive and it's like, well, maybe I should buy it now. It's a lot cheaper than waiting, you know, until I need an oil change in three months and the price went up. If you know you're going to use it, then put it on the shelf and then you'll have it when you're ready instead of running out and getting it. Hey, if you know you're going to use gasoline, maybe set a little bit aside at home because you never know when you need a little bit just to get somewhere or to run a mower or whatever it is you do. Just whatever you do, think about what you need to continue that lifestyle if things get bad and you can't get things. So get them now, have them in your possession and be prepared. It's better to spend the money now rather than wait as they counterfeit more of it and then it's worth less going forward. And so therefore the cost, price of everything that you need is higher. And we've lived through that. I mean, we've, we've gotten railed in the last three years on prices. And now the blowback is uh, we can't afford to live anymore on the same money that we're making. So we need a lot more money. And, and that's what's happening. So we'll see how that ends up. That in and of itself kind of gets into a feedback loop. So um, once you go down that road, it could get ugly. I mean, you're going to have, right now, it's like almost 7.5% ,5 
you know, for a mortgage rate, you know, and that's in historical terms, that's perfectly normal. But when you have thrown all this easy money out there for years, and now you're saying, you clamp down on it. I mean, we're used to paying 3% mortgage rates. Now it's over double that, two and a half times that. Okay, that's a big hit. You're paying a lot more in what? In interest, usury to a bank that does nothing, but create the counterfeit, the money out of nothing and pay off the, you know, the, the person who's selling the house with the money. And it's like, okay, now you got to pay it back, but we're going to make you pay it back three times. It used to be two times. Now it's three times because of the interest rates. Is it worth it? And you wonder why you've got millennials and, and Gen Xers, and not Gen Xers, I guess I'm a Generation Xers, Gen Zers. I don't even know what the freaking terminology is. People that are younger than I am. You've got these people complaining because they can't buy a house. They can't even get in the housing market. They can't even come close. Well, of course not. Of course they can't come close. It's completely unaffordable. Most unaffordable time it's ever been in history, I think, to, to buy a home. So what are you supposed to do? Well, you know, just go live in a trailer. Go live in, uh, you know, a shoebox. Go, uh, you know, go live with your parents. Because that's what you're forced to do. I mean, there's just no way. You can't make it. I mean, you, you look back, you hearken back to the days of Leave it to Beaver. And back in the 50s, you know, a father could go to work and have a suit, you know, when he goes to work. It looked good. And everybody wore a suit. Now they wear flip-flops and tank tops like Westwood. Um, but you could go to work, make a salary, you know, make money. I mean, come home, your wife, work, you know, she's at home working, you know, taking care of the house and you're paying all your bills. You're saving money for retirement and you got a car, you go on vacation, you know, you got one salary. Well, how does that work? Well, what happened? What happened to our purchasing power? Well, part of it is, yes, it's been inflated away, but then you think about it. Okay. Well, everybody in the house has to have a cell phone now. Everybody in the house has to have a television screen in the room. Everybody, you know, we have to buy houses that's got a, a bathroom for every bedroom and then a half bath, you know, for guests. I mean, so you think we need more and more and more. So back in that time, though, you know, look at the Leave it to Beaver house. I mean, he had a den, you know, get some books in it. But what were all the extra things? I mean, you didn't have to have, um, you know, multiple bills. You probably only have one car instead of two cars, three cars, whatever it is. Paying insurance on all those, paying licensing on all those. And you start adding that stuff up, and a lot of it is self-inflicted wounds. Yeah, we've been vampired. There's no doubt about it through inflation. But we've vampired ourselves by getting ourselves involved and enslaved with their digital matrix or their, you know, consuming matrix that they've they've foisted, you know, our lives into or pulled our lives into. And we're giving it energy. I mean... Used to have one phone in the house, and that was it. Yeah, it was tend to be more. It tended to be expensive, and you know, as opposed to maybe one cell phone. But the thing is, when you got three or four cell phones, okay, it's like having four phone, four home phones. How much money are you paying for that? Why are you paying for that? Like I said, one TV. That's all you needed. One TV set. Boom. You know, had a radio. That was basically all you had. Now it's, everybody's got a device. Oh, I need a computer. I need a TV. I need a phone. I need a tablet. And, you know, you think of all these things that have been, that we've, we've bought into and put our energy into, that's less energy that could be spent focused on, you know, the, the core. Now it's all distributed and we need, you know, not just this for everybody. We need this for everybody. Everywhere they go. It's crazy. And then that compounds. Okay, so you get a phone and you're like, well, I need an air tag in case I lose my phone. So you get that. And oh, I need a, an Apple Watch, you know, so that, you know, to go with my phone. And it's just, you think about all the compounding of it. We are our own worst enemies in a lot of ways because they've given us these tools and provided these tools. And we think we need to have them when in fact, you know, maybe we just needed the hammer and the screwdriver and the pliers in the toolbox and it got, you know, most of the stuff done. Well, now we need five different hammers and, uh, you know, just saying. So that's a lot of it. So we can blame the vampires. We can blame the system for what it is. And it is part of the problem. It is a big part of the problem. But, you know, it, it all comes down to choices we make, too. 
anyway, back to what I was saying, you know, as things fall apart and unravel and continue to become unsustainable, I guess that's the best word, unsustainability, you need to be able to sustain yourself and figure out what it is that you need and get it in your possession and have it now. Buy it now because it's not going to get any cheaper later if it's something that everybody needs. And at some point, you just won't be able to get it. Then what are you going to do? Oh, I should have bought it when I could have. Well, I thought it would go down lower. Well, I didn't want to store any more gas because, yeah, I mean, it was three, 385 and then it was 375 and I thought it was 369 today. So, I mean, it's probably going to go lower. So, I should wait. I'm like, well, it did dip a little bit. Maybe now's the time that you want to pick up a little bit. Maybe you fill your tanks up now. Maybe you, you know, get a few gallons on the side and just for things that you're going to need. Something goes on sale, stock up on it if you're going to use it. I mean, you know, use that opportunity to, you know, and a lot of people, I, I mean, I know people that they have nothing in the refrigerator. Uh, it's just like they go to the store and they just get it. Okay, well, what if you, you know, I mean, the store doesn't have unlimited inventory. You know, it's got like, what, a few days and then the whole thing sells out if they don't replenish it, three days, whatever it is. I don't know. What happens? I ask people in Florida when a hurricane's coming. What happens when you have a natural disaster? What happens if, uh, you know, all the Teamsters strike? I mean, what happens, you know, in those scenarios when stuff doesn't show up? Well, I need it. Well, guess you should have bought it when you could have. Better to have it, not need it, than need it, not have it. Things to think about, probably the same thing I say every time I make a video in some way or another, but I, I mean, winter's coming. I think I would prepare a little bit. What good's that money? You know, if they're just going to erode the purchasing power of it and destroy it, ultimately, money is to be used to get things you need to survive. And then hopefully bring some happiness into your life, some pleasure into your life. But if not, at the base level, you need to be able to get the things you need to survive. And that's kind of what money does. It fills that void between bartering to where you just can't, you know, you can, anyway, it's the middleman. So if that middleman doesn't work anymore, you're going to have a problem getting what you need. So get it now while you can. Have it in your possession. You know you're going to need it. Get it. Survival in this time is the most important thing. All right. Love you all. Hope you have a wonderful Monday. Trust yourselves. You got to trust yourself. And do not trust vampires. All they want to do is lie to you and steal, take things from you and suck your energy away. Don't listen to them. All right. Have a wonderful Monday. Love you all. Always trust yourselves. That's all I got.